The company I'm looking at today is probably the closest you'll get to the UK's version of NVIDIA. They are a vertically integrated semiconductor company whose revenue doubled last year and is forecast to do the same this year. They supply infrastructure critical for AI, server storage and networking devices used by hyperscalers such as Amazon, Google, Meta and Microsoft, one of which they have a contract with which is worth over $300 million to them. Could this company be the UK's equivalent to NVIDIA? Let's take a look. That company is Alpha Wave Semi, ticker is AWE, or. So what do they do? Let's have a look. They accelerate the connected world. Alpha Wave Semi is a global leader in high-speed connectivity the world's technology infrastructure. So they do silicon IP, so intellectual property for all kinds of designs for microchips. They do chiplets, which is the new hot thing, uh, which is lots of little chips put together to create one sort of chip. Uh, it's like a Lego sort of design, but it's uh, very high tech. Custom silicon, this is for companies wanting a certain design. They do that and connectivity products. And you can see here, the, here's sort of, um, the end markets. Hyperscale data centers, uh, data networking, AI, storage, 5G, autonomous vehicles. Okay. Um, so, this is what happened. They listed pretty much, they said they were in stealth mode, they said, building the company until 2019. Then, at the top of the bull market, they listed and they raised 856 million. Now, this is quite a big raise for a, a London-listed company, you know. Um, but, of course, it was the top of the market. And since then, they've gone from, I think, £4.10, they listed that, down 76% of the low here in March uh, of uh, 2023. But let's take a closer look at this. You know, this is the, the, the end point. This is what we're coming down to. Let's take a closer look on the chart, because it's a very interesting chart. And I think... They're coming into an up, uptrend. Uh, the downtrend has ended, but I'll show you why. So as we scroll along here, you can see, first of all, this level here, which is around 120, okay, provided some support back in May 2022. Then it bounced off that, retested again in July and in August. Then it broke down in October, then it became resistance. They couldn't get above that. And then it basically broke down Again, they tried to break above 120 again, didn't do it, came down lower. And I see a couple of times here, we've tried to break it once, then it broke it, but popped back down, and then it's finally broken it. We've also got a break here of the 50-day the moving average, which didn't break there, and then it did there, then it's a break of the 200-day moving average, and now we have the golden cross, which of course, in technical terms, is signifies almost the start of an uptrend. And I think uh, it's been, to be fair, after this big breakout here, there's been a, a couple of rough days in the market uh, on Thursday, Friday. So that's why it's um, gone up and down and gone nowhere, really. But I think this is looking technically very good on the chart. Anyway, let's go back to the story. Um, so full year results. These are the fundamentals. That was the technicals. Here's the fundamentals. Um, worth looking at this. Look at the end customers they had. So 2017, 1, 2018, 1, 4, 11, Big growth here, 20, then 80 now end customers, okay? Now, these are big customers. Like I said, one of them is a hyperscaler. You talk about the Amazons, the Googles of the world, who have huge data centers. And uh, I'll show you, you know, the, the sort of proliferation, the exp exponential growth of, of data in a bit. But cumulative bookings, 5 million, 10, 27, that's doubling. And that's five times, 102 347 million, over 580 million dollars of bookings here, and revenue likewise is like a hockey stick here. 3 million, 11, 33, 90, 185, and that's uh, expected to go up for the, what is it, about 300, 400, 350 million expected to do uh, between 340 and 360 um, for 2023. Okay, um, okay, and they say there's a record quarterly bookings exceeding. 100 million for the first time in Q1 2023. The first three nanometer design win with a top North American hyperscaler. Now, these are almost atom size, these design chips, three nanometers. And I'll give you an example. A hair follicle is 100,000 nanometers wide. 
That shows you how big they are. <laughs> so, uh, but management remain confident in the outlook for the business. So the outlook for 2023 remains unchanged. Alpha Wave Semi expects revenues of 340 to 360 and adjusted it with of approximately 87 million US dollars, which is about 25% margin. Very decent margin there, uh, which is at the midpoint of the revenue guidance. Okay, so this is pretty much what they're looking at. 2022, 185 revenue, 47 EBITDA, and the growth in revenue, 84%, 85% here for 2023 to 340, 87 there. So they said, longer term, we expect to achieve annual revenue run rates in excess of $500 million in 2024 and in excess of $1 billion by 2027. And if you go to their presentation, you see why this happens, because they not only sell sort of silicon, but they also get uh, license payments and royalties on silicon shipped. Um, so it's, it's building. The more they sell, the more royalties and, and uh, license revenue they get as well. Um, but okay, this is the end markets. The customers include more than half of the top 20 semiconductor device companies. And now this is in the recent presentation. They now work with seven out of the top 10 semiconductor companies, uh, also hyperscalers, leading technology companies, key partners, TSMC, Samsung Foundry, Intel Foundry Service. These are sort of um, you know, manufacturers of chips, of course. Um, so Samsung, and there's a bit of news there, an AlphaWave IP announced acceleration of deep partnership with flagship global hyperscaler design win at four nanometers this is a while back. Um, so what is a hyperscaler? They are companies, uh, was massive companies like Google, Facebook and Amazon that are making efforts to not only dominate the public cloud and hybrid industries, but to expand their businesses into numerous related verticals as well. Apparently right now there's only 24 companies worldwide that match the definition of hyperscaler. Those 24 companies account for 68% of cloud service market. They operate a combined 320 hyperscale data centers. So that's where all this data is stored. And, uh, you know, it's not just one or two, there's lots of them around the place. And uh, you know, data centers in a lot. But if you look at this, the age of exponential data growth. And if you can imagine now what we're using it, we said streaming services, it's growing at 11.5% uh, in a combined annual growth. AI, 19%. IoT, 13%. Social media, 6%. VR, AR, 32%, cloud service, 21%. So it's all growing, all is in, and data, it's getting huge. These are zettabytes. <laughs> I don't know how big zettabyte is. But if you look, every, every three years, they're pretty much doubling. Um, where are we in right now? At 97, it'll pretty much double by 2025 to 181 zettabytes. Like I said, in, 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 in order to do this, these data centers, not have to be have faster chips, faster connectors, but have to be low latency and low power as well, because of course, uh, power costs money, it's heat as well. So they have to, the chips have to get in better and the connectivity has to get better as well. And that's where uh, Alpha Wave Semi come in. They enable uh, companies to do this. Uh, so why do they choose Alpha Wave Semi? Um, so this TSMC Partner of the Year from 2020, 2021 and 2022. No other company's done this. And you're thinking, who are TSMC? Well, they are the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Okay, as a multinational semiconductor company, it is the world's most valuable semiconductor company, the world's largest dedicated independent, which is pure play semiconductor foundry. So you get a lot of companies, uh, you know, go to these. For example, uh, Alpha Semi was for design, you know. Um, a chip or some silicon for somebody and TSMC will manufacture it, you know, pretty much. Uh, but it is the biggest in the world. But um, like I said, they've won part of the year for three years in a row. No other company's done that. Uh, Alpha Wave Semi expands collaboration with Samsung, adds three nanometers connectivity IP to meet accelerated AI and data center demand. You can see that's where it's coming from. The amount of data needed for AI is huge, of course. And uh, you need to get more powerful uh, conductors and faster connectivity. Um, so it does say here, it's very key. Isn't it? Alpha Semiwave is a key partner for Samsung Foundry, as they are established industry leaders in high-performance connectivity, IP, 
and Triplet Solutions. We are very pleased. This is um, Zhong Xin, and he's corporate. Uh, well, he's, he's from Samsung. But we're very pleased and deeply collaborating with the Alpha Wave Semi over multiple customer designs and process generations, including the five nanometers, four, and three. We look forward to many more opportunities to leverage Alpha Wave Semi's connectivity IP in the Samsung Foundry platform in 2023 and beyond. So they are using, you know, Samsung are using their IP. And so, because chip design is very complex, and for a company to sort of build from the ground up, you know, a chip would take many millions of pounds and lots of time. But Alpha Wave have been doing this for so long, you can almost start with the building blocks from their IP, and so you pay them for it a license and a royalty for that. And uh, it's built at Samsung, you know, Foundry, but also they collaborate with uh, Alpha Wave to win clients as well. Um, so just looking at the table here for, of, of uh, semiconductors and process technology and nodes there, um, you can see the production capacity. I mean, Samsung is the biggest, but they also produce, you know, memory for their, their, their sort of electronics, their products as well. But um, T, um, TSMC is the biggest uh, you know, power play. But like I said, uh, Alpha Wave have agreements with both these. Uh, but look at this, this is very interesting. Uh, the Korea Economic Daily. Samsung takes on TSMC with strengthened chip design IPs. Now, of course, AlphaWave are, have collaborations with both these and Intel. Uh, and they say here, Samsung, the world's largest memory chip maker, it's drastically expanded chip design intellectual property partnerships with its clients with a view to creating a stronger contract chip making ecosystem. The move is also designed to strengthen its foundry prowess and enhance customer services to take on its uh, arch rival Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, so TSMC. The South Korean tech giant said Wednesday it will beef up its chemical design by collaborating with leading chip design tool companies including um, Synopsys, Cadence and Alpha Wave Semi. This is the management team, by the way. Uh, John Lofton, executive chairman. Uh, that's his company's there. Acronix S3. Um, there's Tony Palace, CEO. Snowbush, maybe Intel. Again, those three, all the three here come from the same companies. 20 years of executive experience. And you can see here, they said they're leading here of 100G connectivity. They've gone from 180 nanometers Two, three. Um, so the companies have generated nearly a three billion of value since two thousand and four. Um, so let's have a look at the spreadsheet. Let's open it up. This is happening here. So we see the interims. I mean, they have done three acquisitions, but two acquisitions in the last year. So that's you know taking a bit of a hit as well on the on the on the thing. But as you see, growth of the top line was very good here. Revenue. Um, they did take a bit of debt um, in the last year to. to well, 210 million of debt, the cash of 186 million. This is in in dollars, of course, because they are they do report in dollars because they're most of their companies are they or clients are in America. Uh, operating profit growth now this has gone down because of the acquisitions, uh, but that will revert to norm. Uh, value is getting better. Oh, in fact, uh, price to book 1.9, uh, price to sales is a bit high, but it's coming down here. And it will come down further. Like this. Still, this year was a, it's a year of, sort of um, digestion of acquiring companies. M and A that stops now, and now they're working on efficiencies and rolling this out and growing. So um, it was really a year of transition. But nevertheless, it was, you know, huge top line growth. So cash went down. Current ratio is fine. This is health. Uh, quick result point nine. Uh, a lot healthier in the interims because of the acquisitions. But nevertheless, efficiency very good. Gross margins of uh, 67, operating at 20, which is very good. Um, it was even higher there. But that's around, it's going to be around 25% uh, EBITDA, 20% operating, and about 18% um, post-tax. So it's very good. Um, and as far as momentum is concerned, it's good momentum here. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're getting above the, these moving averages, and they're almost crossing up there. So it's good momentum in the chart, and forecasts are very good as well. In fact, let's have a look at the returns here. Um, so I've got based on these uh, revenue growth, 89%, 42%, 20%, which is, this is probably less. I've, I've got these two forecasts, but I've added this one in, uh, and margins of 25%, uh, 19, 18, I don't know why that's red, they should be green, and multiples of 5, 20, and 30. Then you're looking at these kind of returns, 
of next year. So by 2025, 150% uh, on that. Okay. Um, let's look at what the analysts have got. This, uh, I think it's three analysts. Strong buy is two. One is a buy. So they've got uh, maximum 272 pence, uh, average of 210. So one is obviously less bullish than the other. This is one going for a 130, I think. Uh, but we're currently at 130. So you're looking at you know, an average of 50% up or 51% uh, and a max of 104%. This is only for the next year, by the way. Now, you know, so their growth could continue and their margins will get better. So it could be more upside. So in summary, I mean, if you look at the growth um, thing, it's 65. Uh, this is out of 100. This is 100%. This is, of course, uh, momentum and forecasts are very good. Uh, efficiency will get better and value and growth will get better. And I'll explain why here. If you look at growth, their margins revert to norm. This is because of the deferred acquisition payments they've made this year. That's why that's taken a bit of a hit. But that will revert to 18% going forward. And also value will improve, of course. They get sort of... Uh, EV uh, post uh, profit for tax about 13 and a PE of 13 there. If they continue at this level, share price, of course. So the value will get better as well. So uh, all in all, it's looking like a very exciting high growth company. Um, so I think it's one you know worth watching. And like I said, I have bought a few shares because I quite like the space they're in and where they are as a company within that space. They are one of the leaders. Um, in that space, very high tech company. So um, I think an exciting company worth watching. Do your own research, please.